I remember it like it was yesterday. I was 12. And I just kept coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. I'll never forget it. Tory Lanez is surprising the world right now. And I genuinely think that this dude is a sociopath. Not just because I disagree with his uh, thought process going into this Megan Thee Stallion case. I think it's mainly because of how he's addressed it that's given me pause about his participation in the accusations levied against him. First and foremost, he's talking in this entire video, this entire live, like a lawyer trying to poke holes in the plaintiff's case as opposed to an innocent man trying to give you evidence as to why he isn't the culprit. Now, in Tory's absolute defense, I understand uh, the lack of, I guess, information you'd be able to give in a situation like this. I honestly didn't expect the dude to go live. I didn't expect him to come out in the public and put himself in a position where he could be uh, in real time questioned about events that he wasn't allowed to legally speak on, but he did so. And he did not address any of those comments back and forth as he was doing his live, which kind of gave me pause because I was wondering why you needed to do that in a live setting where you could have just made a video and uploaded it to your IG if you weren't going to answer any questions real time. But I guess the look or perception of Instagram live is just less planned or it seems a little less scripted, I guess. So he may come off more genuine to people. That being said, I genuinely don't remember whether or not he was standing up or sitting down. And I don't even mean that as a short joke. I was just surprised. Pride. I found out what the game Among Us was about two weeks ago and Tory Lane's definitely moving like an imposter. I got through about 15 minutes, 30 minutes or so of this Instagram live to realize that this dude is just going to reiterate the exact same things that he told us in that album that he dropped almost a month ago. In the most logical way, you would expect someone who had no involvement in something like this to just shut up, unfortunately take the battering from social media and let the truth be revealed in court. I mean, after all, I might think he's guilty, but I didn't want him to go on Instagram live and, you know, back himself into a corner. I thought it'd be entertaining or funny. And it certainly was when he started bringing up uh, black people and, and how black men are supposed to protect black women. And for some reason, how him having a music video with some black women in it immediately means he couldn't harm the black female demographic. But I, you know, I'm pretty sure there were black children in R. Kelly's music videos as well. And, you know, we see how that turned out. But I guess the most important of the details that people would have wanted me to address if I was going to talk about this story again were the issues that he brought up. And honestly, like I said, the more and more I kept watching the live, the more and more it just felt like Tory Lanez had watched a YouTube video or read through Twitter feeds of people in his defense and kind of regurgitated them on the live. Which is why I said he sounds more like a lawyer trying to poke holes in the plaintiff's story as opposed to offering us evidence as to why he couldn't have done what he was accused of. Lawyers are professional gaslighters doing everything to make the jury and, 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 the, and the witnesses question what it is that they saw and how it could have linked to the crime that the, that the client is actually being accused of. They're professional gaslighters. They'll defend the client even if they know he's guilty. The first thing that was extremely funny about this is when Tory Lane said, I got a call from rock nation and they told him don't talk about that or else i'm actually making it juicier because apparently from what tory said they only called him to say it might not be in your best interest tory immediately just abided by that for whatever reason he has no affiliation to rock nation I don't believe that he has any vested interest in Rock Nation. I don't believe that Rock Nation was scouting him for anything. So what motivation did you have to not tell your side of the story when A, you weren't accused of anything at that time, and B, it would have been the perfect opportunity for you to come back strong into quarantine radio, letting people know about your experience with the police and saying how you probably felt unsafe in that environment, which is why you had to carry a firearm in the first place. I thought that would have been a great idea, just even as brilliant PR in that time that you were in. I thought that would have been perfect. But despite not being charged with anything at that time you remained silent after rock nation told you to say nothing even though you had no motivation to not say anything assuming that you were innocent and proceeded to stay silent for the next i don't know month month and a half until megan actually accused you bro if i get a call from rock nation and they tell me to take down one of my videos or something like that i'm asking for the phone number the manager who i'm speaking to i'm telling on everyone because immediately it sounds shady why can't i speak another thing that he does in this live that kind of throws me off is heavily reference police reports which 
give me the impression that either Tory Lanez hasn't been involved with the police very often or that he believes that everything that the police write in a report is never questioned. Oftentimes, police reports are inaccurate and don't actually tell the full detail of a story. They give a brief outline of what may or may not have happened so that they can give it to the prosecutors, who then determine whether or not it needs further investigation, which in this case is exactly what happened. The prosecution returned the police report to the police, the LAPD, and said, we need further information on this. Police reports being misleading, a little too vague, even sometimes flat out wrong are, are common, which is why cops aren't prosecutors. They are law enforcement, first responders. It's highly unlikely that they would sit there and question someone bleeding out of their foot that said they may have been cut with glass and keep trying to pester her with more questions as opposed to just getting her straight to the hospital. You know, the next thing Tori does is offer as a defense, how did I shoot you? And you didn't see me. How can you identify who's shooting at you if you're facing the other way? How did I, how did I hit you? but I didn't break no bones and I didn't break no tendons. This may wanna be pre-law Twitter, go on a rampage, uh, Googling images of, of, of feet, the biology of feet. Now everyone's got a foot fetish, throwing x-rays of bones inside of the foot in there and, and trying to tell people, yeah, man, if, if a bullet went through there, uh, there's definitely a 100% chance it would have hit something. See, unfortunately, it didn't actually go through the foot. Now, I don't know if it was a full bullet, or if it was a bullet fragment, but even the hospital confirmed that she was shot. And based off of her injuries that, again, weren't taken on the same day of the surgery, because if you can see, the foot had healed quite a bit since then, and the wound that she had posted a picture of was probably days after, maybe a week or two later, even though from Tori's point of view, he's saying that they were taken in that exact moment and that it's illegal to do so, which it's not. So we've got confirmation that the bullet didn't go straight through the foot. It wasn't a clean shot, all right? It didn't, it didn't penetrate, which which is why it didn't fracture or hit any bones or hit any tendons because it wasn't a straight shot. It didn't go all the way through. My man said all that and still at that point in the live didn't say that he didn't shoot. Again, the more time you spend focused on the opposing side story, the less time you give yourself to prove why you are as innocent as you say. Because if I got accused of something like that, fuck that story. Your honor, I was cruising down the street and my 6 foe jocking the bitches, smacking the hoes. No domestic though. Corey Lane's talking to Meg Thee Stallion like, so if you say you were afraid because of police brutality, why didn't you say anything about you being in danger while you were in the stretcher? Just in my head, in my head, all right? Y'all don't have to think this way. You don't have to think this way. I'm just telling you why I think the way I think. Maybe you disagree and that's fine. But in my head, if someone's crazy enough to shoot me and we're in this neighborhood, I think that they might actually try to get into a confrontation with the police if they end up getting arrested. I want to prevent people from being in that situation. I don't feel like my life is in danger. I don't feel like you were going to kill me, but you shot me. I don't get why it has to be an immediate life or death situation. And even if you think it makes no sense why Meg would have protected Tori in this instance, her rationale is still consistent with the domestic situation back in 2015 or 16, where she admits to participating in an abusive relationship, but not wanting to involve police, not wanting to make a scene, not wanting to involve others because she didn't want them to get in trouble. One of the most hilarious things about this live that I thought was really funny was when Tori asked, why would you get back in the car with a man that you just said hurt you? Why, why would you jump back in the car with a dangerous man who just did a dangerous crime to you, who did this criminal intent to you and all this, all this. And I thought it was hilarious because it's like, my nigga, where else am I supposed to go? You just immobilized me. I can't walk on this bitch right now. I need somewhere to sit. In my head, if you went for my foot, you're obviously not aiming for anything above the feet, right? Because you, you like that shit for some reason. That's like telling somebody that was shot in the chest, dog, this story makes no sense. You mean to tell me he shot you in his house and you just laid there? What's wrong with you? I'm bleeding out help me bro he chopped off both your legs in his basement and you just stayed there with him what's wrong with you yes if i got immobilized hitting the foot and i have to limp out of a vehicle i don't think i'm getting very far so yeah i'd probably sit in the car and try to tend to my wounds even if the person who hit me is in the car too in funnier parts of the video he's talking about how the neck is the is the black woman in the head is the black man in order for the head to move in order for the head to move left right whatever it is doing it needs the guidance of the neck i actually think he's speaking facts here i mean we could all use some neck all this talk about the neck and the head and he still shot feet now i'm the poster boy for i don't like black women Nah, i think people would be okay with you not liking black women 
You just can't shoot him. <laughs> I'm not here to bash this woman. I'm not here to come down on this woman. Why not? This woman is everything but a child of God. If she lied on me for no reason. This man keeps referring to, to, to Megan as, as his friend. You're less than nothing to me. Which is why, like I said, some of this stuff just comes off so manipulative because it just leaves the door open in case, baby, in case you come to your senses, you didn't really mean what you said or do what you did. You always got a place next to me. I'm not here to disrespect her. Nope, I'm being disrespectful. I'm throwing you under the bus. If I didn't do it, I don't care. You lied on me? Hey, yo, get her feet. Get her feet. But she's a black woman. Get her feet. It was the funniest thing in the world to watching this because Tori is like, y'all told me not to make a statement. Where are y'all taking this? And I guess he interpreted that as like, don't say anything about anything on your social media at all. Don't even let them know you're alive. Don't let them know you're out of jail. Don't let them know you're breathing. Don't continue your quarantine radio series. Don't do anything. All he said was that they told him not to speak on the situation, which I don't believe. But if that were true and that's the case, you still ghosted your entire platform months before you were accused of anything. After you heard Meg was shot, and, and her PR team or, or Rock Nation called you and said that you couldn't speak on the situation, why wouldn't you immediately call Meg? Why wouldn't you make contact with Meg? You didn't shoot her, right? You didn't do anything wrong to her, right? Why don't you get in contact with her? She's still your friend, right? The next time it seems that he's even aware of Meg the Stallion's existence is when she says moments prior to actually saying that he's the one that did it, stop talking crazy or stop lying or I'll expose you, something to that effect. You mean to tell me that you did nothing wrong to this woman? at all whatsoever had no participation in her getting hurt this night after being together for a fair bit and randomly you just drop contact with her after she was shot and don't hear of her again until she's about to accuse you of this you didn't try to call her contact her nothing you ain't do nothing that's crazy to me but he's casually given the story through this live as if he's not surprised at their lack of contact maybe you know why she's not talking to you i don't know i don't know man like I said before, I think the dude is too passive uh, when it comes to trying to explain his own innocence, but he seems eagerly aggressive to challenge the plot that she laid out, which means to me, Tori and his team and, and his lawyers have probably said, yeah, you may have did it, but can she prove it? Let's focus more on the fact that she might not be able to fully prove it and less on the fact that we think you did it. Because that's ultimately what matters in the court. It's not about who did what, it's about who can prove what. I think Tory's plan to be silent during this entire investigation probably would have went over better had he never come out with an album and had he never come out with a response. Because despite the public wanting him to address it in some way, it just makes him look worse when he addresses it like this. And I'm sure there are some things that Meg Thee Stallion is probably keeping on the hush hush in regards to what started the argument what prompted her to relieve herself of tory and get out of the car and start walking away i genuinely have less vested interest in that as there's a crime and then there's a victim here but that's not lost on me that she'd probably have some details that she'd rather keep on the hush hush in this situation but not details in my opinion that i believe to be uh to the level that i think she's lying on tory lanes because i just don't think there's any motivation to as for tory I'm not not on his side because I'm on Meg's side. I'm just I don't see any point of view me looking from Tory's perspective on this where he didn't do it. I just don't. 